Chris Sewell here, baseball card collector, investor, dealer in that order. Welcome, everyone. Uh, today, I want to run through some sports card history. And, you know, when I think about sports cards uh, when I was a kid or before, uh, they're often very, you know, very plain, you know, simple cardboard and basic photos and very simple card designs. Whereas today, you got autographs and jerseys and, uh, you know, parallels and serial numbers and all sorts of crazy things going on. And not saying that's a bad thing in any way, just saying, uh, it's, it's pretty interesting how cards have evolved over the years, and I was wondering when all these things sort of first appeared, like the very first autograph, the very first serial number, etc., etc., etc. So today I wanted to run through about 20 industry firsts, like the first time we saw uh, in sports cards, you know, these different categories. And uh, we're going to start all the way back in 1956. That's when, uh, you know, basically Tops took over and, and had a monopoly for a few for a few decades in sports cards, and run all the way up to 2024, present day. And uh, yeah, just check out some. We'll call them sports card firsts. So before 1957, the actual dimensions of sports cards was all over the place. It was uh, changing quite regularly. In the early 50s, you had you know very small Bowman cards. In the mid 50s, you had bigger uh, tops cards than we know today. And if you go back into pre-war, they're all over the place in sort of size and shape. But in 1957, Topps came out with the first two and a half by three and a half size sports card, and this is the, the dimensions that we still use today, some 60 plus years later. Uh, it released it this size in all four sports: baseball, football, basketball, and hockey. And this is the first time we see the standard two and a half by three and a half size sports card, uh, which became industry standard and and still is. Rookie cards have been a critical part of the hobby forever. But before 1959, no sports card set had ever had the term rookie or RC on it. Uh, but in 1959, Tops with their baseball set came out with a subset, the Sporting News Rookie Stars of 1959. And this is the first time we ever see this, or so we notice that a sports card manufacturer is sort of recognizing the importance of rookie cards to the collector. Uh, in 1959, there were no notable names in this subset, you know, no big Hall of Famers to chase, but uh, this is the first year that it ever happened. 1960 has uh, the same sort of subset and does include Hall of Famers Carl Yastrzemski and Willie McCovey. A year later, Topps takes it one step further by including all-star rookie cups on uh, the cards of some of the more notable rookies. And this is the first time we see this the Topps All-Star Rookie Cups. Those Topps All-Star Rookie Cups are still used today. You can see the Willie McCovey I just mentioned uh, on the right being a rookie card of a Hall of Famer and the first one to include an all-star rookie cup. Prior to 1971, basically all images on sports cards are, are profiles or poses, but uh, in 1971, Top starts to include in-action shots, you know, photos from actual gameplay, and uh, this isn't truly the first time this ever happened. It, has hap it did happen before in some oddball sets and, and even some Tops and Bowman sets here and there, but this is the first time where we see it sort of more regularly included on Top sets, and there's a lot of in-action photos in the set. You can see Joe Morgan and Nolan Ryan there. And uh, this also led to one of the more famous cards in baseball card history, the Thurman Munson uh, with the All-Star Rookie Cup and this uh, fantastic in-action photo. Throughout the years, many all-time great players have their rookie cards in update sets or traded sets. And the first time we ever see this is 1974 when uh, Topps releases a 44-card traded set featuring players who had been traded recently and so that collectors can get these players in their you know on a card in their new team and you can see the card design here you know can't miss it traded in big letters across the card the only two hall of famers featured in the set were juan marichal and ron santo but obviously the concept for a traded set or an update set uh, is still you know very a very important part of the hobby today For roughly 25 years, Topps basically had a, a full monopoly on sports cards in all four major sports. Uh, the Fleer produced a few sets in the 60s in a couple of sports, and uh, Philadelphia had a short run in football in 1960 in the 60s. But for the most part, it's all Topps from 1956 through 1980. But in 1981, a very important milestone in sports card history, Donruss and Fleer appear on the scene in the baseball card market. And this is really the first time Topps you know, has major competition since 1956. And this will really, uh, you know, ultimately lead to the brand boom, we'll call it, in the late 80s and into the early 90s, which uh, really, you know, changed sports cards and the sports card industry in many, many ways. You're going to see a lot of industry first in the 1990s, as that was, you know, really the most innovative decade for sports cards. Uh, cards in 1989, or the industry in 1989, looks nothing like cards and in, in the industry in, in 2000. And that's because so many things changed in the 1990s. Uh, the first pack inserted autograph is, of course, a big one. And that was this 
1990 Upper Deck Reggie Jackson. It was still numbered out of 2,500. This was the only autograph you could pull, and the cards were mass-produced in 1990, so you would have to open many, many cases of Upper Deck uh, before you would pull one of these, you know, on average. And obviously, autographs are a huge part of the hobby in all four major sports today. Uh, this card here is the very, very first one. And in my opinion, a little undervalued given its historical significance. Serial numbering cards, of course, very, very important part of the hobby today. Uh, the first serial numbered set was all the way back in 1991 with 1991 Donruss Elite. Now, technically, the Reggie Jackson I just showed was the first serial numbered card, but this is the first serial numbered set. It was an eight card set numbered to 10,000, which seems a bit ridiculous compared to the serial numbering going on today. Uh, you know, chase cards today are serial numbered to 100 or 25 or 5 or even 1. Uh, but back in 1991, the chase cards were serial numbered to 10,000, and this was a big time chase set uh, and they still hold value today despite the high you know the, the relatively high uh, print run at least compared to what we're used to now if you have a hard time keeping up with the parallels today you know the hyper no huddle disco power uh, purple prisms uh, you can think wild card back in 1991 with their football set which is the very very first parallel set uh, the stripes. So you can see the up, Emmett Smith in the upper left is the base card, and then each additional card is a parallel with a different stripe number in the lower left. There's a 5, a 10, a 50, a 100, and a 1,000, and, and the higher the stripe number, the more rare the card. And some of you might point to the Tiffany sets in the 1980s. Well, that was slightly different. Those were only distributed in set form, and it's true. Those are sort of parallels, but this is the first time we see uh, the concept of parallels used as like a, a card you could chase and pull out of a pack uh, as like a big money card. The first ever die cut set is a little bit of a forgotten set. It's from 1983 SP, uh, which is a very, very famous set, but not for this insert set. It's famous for the Derek Jeter rookie, but it also featured this insert set 1993 SP Premium Power, which is the first ever set to feature a die cut of any kind. You can see at the top there's a you know, sort of this you know interesting cut along the top border, and this is the first ever die cut set uh, featuring you know stars of the game and, and just a, sort of a basic insert set. Now, later in the 1990s, the, the concept of the die cut went way overboard, and they went uh, went bananas with it. But, yeah, this one here is the very first one. In 1993, Topps came out with their finest brand, which was a huge leap forward in sort of the the concept of the premium brand in, in the sports cards. But most important about those sets is that they featured refractors, and this is the first time we ever see refractors featured on sports cards. They were a big hit right out of the gate, and they are, of course, a big hit still today. Uh, Prism Parallels basically just copied the same concept. But, uh, I mean, they're attractive cards, so it, it makes sense. Now, the baseball came out first and was an extremely rare product. Basketball, a little less so, but still also quite rare. Uh, the baseball today is uh, very, very expensive stuff, even for commons. Whereas the basketball is a little more affordable, but yeah, 1993 Finest Refractors, that is a very, very key, you know, milestone in sports card history. If you're ever wondering when they first started putting little pieces of cloth or a bat or a shoe or a hat or a glove onto a cards, uh, the answer is 1996 with Upper Deck Game Jersey, and the first set to do this was the hockey set. Uh, base, they also did this with baseball and football a year later, but the hockey set is the very first 1996 Upper Deck, appropriately titled Game Jersey, and it took a little while for this to catch on. I don't think this set was super popular right out of the gate, but uh, obviously it eventually did, and this set today is, is quite valuable in all three of the sports, as it was a pretty rare set, and also, of course, of its historical significance being the very first. 1991 was the first year of serial numbered cards when they were serial numbered to 10,000, and it took them only six years for the manufacturers to get serial numbering all the way down to one of ones, uh, which first appeared in 1997 with Flare Showcase. Also with Ultra, uh, Flare Showcase had the, the masterpieces here. Uh, Ultra also had a masterpiece, but the Flare Showcase, I believe, came out first in baseball. Here you can see the Andrew Jones is the, uh, the only one of one masterpiece as stated on the back, and they also did this with uh, football and basketball as well in 1997. In 1997, Pinnacle put out a set sort of ahead of its time, uh, the first ever set featuring all female players, 1997 Pinnacle Inside WNBA. And while cards of female athletes aren't a massive part of the hobby today, we have seen some very, very high sales on players like Serena Williams and uh, Alex Morgan, and, and recently Caitlin Clark, of course. 
Uh, whereas before this set, cards of female athletes basically did not exist at all. So in that sense, uh, it is sort of a significant transition set. When I was trying to think of what the first rookie patch auto was, you know, RPA, my first instinct was uh, 2003 Exquisite Basketball, but it actually happened three years earlier uh, in 2000 when Upper Deck put out a number of rookie patch auto sets in uh, in football and basketball, SPX probably being the most notable brand. And uh, RPA, rookie patch auto, just means, you know, it's a card that features all three of those things, a rookie, a patch, and an auto on the same card. Now, in 2000, neither the football class nor the basketball class had any really notable rookies, so there's very, very few sort of important RPA cards from this set. Now, ironically, Tom Brady's rookie is 2000. He just wasn't in any of the RPA sets. But, uh, yeah, 2000 is the first time we see the all-important rookie patch auto. Prism parallels dominate the parallel world today in football and basketball. Uh, the first time we see the Prism Parallels was 2012, which is the first year of Panini Prism in all four major sports. And today, you know, the Parallels have gotten kind of out of control with all sorts, uh, you know, 50 plus parallel versions of every card every year. Whereas back in 2012, you were only, we would have around five or less, and they were basically just the standard colors, blue, green, red, gold, and, uh, and silver. Now, there's actually been quite a few new ideas in the hobby recently, and it's tough to say which of them will sort of, you know, fade into obscurity and which of those will will actually have a major impact on the hobby moving forward. One that I think is is here to stay is the 2023 Topps Major League debut patches. I think it's a really cool concept. Uh, they were patches that were worn on the jersey of the player on their Major League debut in the game, and after the game they, you know, take the patch off and put it onto a card, and of course it's a one-of-one. One. And yeah, I would I would if I was guessing, I would guess that this will sort of be a concept that we see in, in the hobby uh, for many years to come. But that's it, just some interesting industry firsts that I uh, came up with here. If there's uh, some that I didn't mention, I'm sure there are plenty. I would love to hear about them in the comments, you know, some industry firsts that you always found to be significant or, or special to you for whatever reason. But thank you everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed and we'll see you all again next time. Thanks everyone.